Wow, it's been like a whole year since I last saw you. How have you been? Oh, I'm so funny. <laughs> new year, new me, right? Wrong. The mummification of New Year's Eve trends might have you thinking that millennials and Gen Z are obsessed with transforming themselves for the new year. I mean, eating 12 grapes as soon as the clock strikes 12 under the table, running around your neighborhood block with an empty suitcase so that you're not alone again this Valentine's Day, and eating fresh noodles the minute the calendar strikes the 1st of January so you're not alone for the rest of your life. But funnily enough, a lot of these traditions have been embedded in many cultures around the world for millennia. So when did humans unanimously decide that they had to hit the gym come January 1st? Let's get into it. One, two, three, let's go! <laughs> The date that majority of the world recognises as New Year's Eve, December 31st, aligns itself with the Gregorian calendar. However, the tradition of celebrating New Year's can be traced all the way back to the founder of Rome, Romulus. The month of January was originated by one of the Roman kings, Numus Pompilus. I hope I said that right. Pompilus's calendar eventually fell out of sync with the sun. So one of Rome's greatest emperors, Julius Caesar, worked with the empire's greatest mathematicians and astrologers in order to design the Roman calendar, which closely aligns with the Gregorian calendar that we follow today. Julius Caesar decreed January 1st the beginning of the Roman calendar in order to honour the month's namesake, Janus, the god of beginning, who has two faces, one that can look back in the past and one that can look forward in the future. Romans used to celebrate New Year's Eve by exchanging gifts, decorating their homes in laurel leaves, and hosting grand parties. And uh, we know how the Romans get down, so I'm sure those parties were wild. Later on in history, Christian leaders would try to change the beginning of the year to align with religiously significant dates, such as December 25th, Jesus's supposed birthday. We all know that's not his birthday, but let's not get into that or March 25th, the supposed day of the Last Supper. However, Pope Gregory VIII decreed in 1852 that the beginning of the Gregorian calendar would be January 1st, and it has been ever since. The tradition of eating red grapes under a table on New Year's Day actually originates back to Spain. The tradition goes as follows. For every toll of the clock at midnight, you eat a grape, and each grape symbolises good luck for every month of the year. It's believed that the tradition was created by winemakers in the south of the country during the early 20th century to help boost grape sales during the winter seasons. Capitalism wins yet again. It is a Colombian tradition to run around your neighbourhood block with an empty suitcase in order to bring about a year of good travel. It's also recommended to hold a wad of money with you to bring about good luck in financial stability. Many other countries have their own quirky New Year's Eve traditions such as smashing plates in Denmark, eating fresh soba noodles in Japan and smashing pomegranates in Turkey. There's a lot of smashing in these traditions for some reason. The general idea of most of them anyway is to bring about a year of good luck, prosperity and wealth. Those of you who grew up watching American media or are simply American might remember the episode of Friends, specifically the episode where Ross and Monica are invited to Dick Clark's Wait, I'm gonna get it. New Year's Rockin' Eve. We are going to Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Did I say that right? It's the iconic episode where they do their dance routine they made when they were kids on the live camera feed of the New Year's Eve party in order to fulfill their lifelong dreams of being on TV during New Year's Eve, specifically on Dick Van Clark's rockin' New Year's Eve special party. <laughs> Anyways, it was during this episode that I learned about the phrase waiting for the ball to drop and I'd passed it off as an American colloquialism, but it actually is an American New Year's Eve tradition. You see, in the 20th century, New York City banned fireworks. Party organisers designed a huge ball that would drop down a pole at New Year's Eve while everyone counted down to midnight. And I guess it worked. I can't imagine a ball dropping down a pole having the same impact as like beautiful lights in the sky, but hey, 
fire safety. I'm sure the dogs are happy. I'm wearing the red frames today to rock the whole cherry theme that's going on. A study by Heng Chen Dai, I hope I've said that correctly, identifies the fresh start effect as a person's ability to disassociate past performance outcomes from their current or future goals. Seeing the clock set back to zero can act as an emotional refresh, a time to regain our focus, reflect on our past actions and accomplishments, and set new goals to aspire to. For a lot of us, fixating on our past can prohibit our future development, living with regret over our actions and the consequences of them. That's why for a lot of people, the reset at the beginning of the year can be a huge motivation. If the beginning of the year means everything resets back to zero, there is no past for you to reflect back on. And therefore, if the only way to move is forward, then only progress can be made. Dye's studies suggest that a temporal landmark, aka the date of the first of the first, can work as a great jumping pad for pursuing new goals. An in-depth study was taken to investigate temporal landmarks and their ability to motivate aspirational behaviour. In the first test, participants took part in 10 one-minute word games, where they received a cash reward for every correct answer given. Halfway through the process, the subjects received feedback. And to create the fresh start, the testing group applied a reset with the last five rounds of scoring, offering them a new starting point for their score. The second test involved participants using performing tracking apps to improve a specific habit. All of the participants were given resets and half were assigned to a weak performance group and the other to a strong performance group. The people in the poor performance group were told they were doing badly and the people in the strong performance group were told they were doing well. In both of the first two tests, the only people that benefited from a fresh start were the people who felt that they had not been performing well. And the resets were actually harmful for the performance of people who were doing well in the first place. Okay, so what can we take from this study? Well, if we felt like we were already doing well in our past year, resetting our goals for the new year can almost feel like erasing all of the hard work that we've done. The new year can act as an opportunity for you to expand and build on top of all of the work that you've done and not to erase all of it. Setting new goals that expand on the work that we've already done is still room for progress. It doesn't mean that our aspirations have become stagnant. Setting new goals that can almost be unattainable can actually set us up for failure rather than motivation for more progress. Making new goals that expand on the work that we've already done the year previous can be seen as achievements in themselves, not as us staying stagnant. In fact, setting new goals, although aspirational, that are out of reach, can set ourselves up more for failure than progression. The new year can be an opportunity for you to work and build upon the work that you've already done, not to take it all away. And that's not to say that every new year means that it has to be a complete reset from the previous. But if every new year we are setting goals that have to be bigger and better than everything that we've done before, it can feel kind of belittling to all of the progress that we've made the 12 months previous. However, there may be some of you, like myself, who didn't have the best 2023. And it can be inspirational for you to reset in the new year. That's not to say that the progress you made in the last year is beneath you. However, if you know that you have haven't had the best year at all, having a reset on everything allows you to be able to build a stable foundation, the one that you probably needed in the 12 months previous. It may just mean that 2024 or 2025 or whatever year you're watching this in allows you to build the foundation you need to stack upon progress and achievements year after year. You don't necessarily have to take away that first building block to be able to feel like you've done something new. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you feel like the things that you've been doing in the past year have set you up for progress, there's no need for you to make a 180 turn. Sometimes only 90 degrees of a turn is what you need in order to make a huge impact. The key to actually progressing in the new year is reflecting back on our past actions. It's easy to say that it's a new year and it's a new me, but how and why? What was it that you did in the last year that you felt like led you to a place where you don't want to be again? What exactly did you not do that you would like to do for yourself? How can you change certain actions in order to be more beneficial to the goals that you've set for yourself this year? 
The same way that we would look back on our past exam papers and read through the markings that our teacher gave us in order to figure out how we calculated something wrong, is the same way you want to look at yourself. How can we look back on our past actions and change minor things that might mean that we get the right equation at the end of it? Essentially, January 1st kind of works as a placebo effect. If we tell ourselves this is the starting point of something that we're working towards, it works as a jump starter which technically means we don't need to wait to the beginning of the year in order to work towards something. I know a lot of people who started the 25 hard challenge in the middle of the year so that by January 1st they would be finished with it, but I also saw a lot of people who started it randomly throughout the year and finished it in September, May, June, whatever it may be, and it was still a very significant change in their life. They were still able to instill new habits that they wanted to maintain such as exercising regularly, reading more, drinking more water, eating cleaner food, something that we don't have to wait until the new year to do. You can do it at any time and if it's giving yourself a gauge of time that helps you stick to that plan and be consistent, why not do that instead? You know, you could give yourself a 30-day challenge, a 60-day challenge, a two-week challenge. Having that temporal gauge definitely is a great jump starter, but we don't have to wait until the new year to do it. You can do it at any time. Hands up, whose mental health has been affected by social media? It can definitely be hard for someone like myself whose job revolves around being on social media often and we can definitely say that the culture around New Year's on social media has upped the ante over the years. You see, this isn't like back in the day where you could put your biggest insecurity on your MySpace bio and it would be relatable and deep and emotional and profound. Nowadays, algorithms are tailored into you posting your biggest accomplishments. People want to post when they receive their degree. People want to post when they got a new job. People want to post when they got their money up. People aren't necessarily posting about their lowest of lows. And also, if you're anything like me, if I'm having a horrible day where I'm crying my guts out, I'm probably not going to record myself. If we think about it, a lot of the time when people are posting their lows on social media, there is an agenda behind it. And it's not always financial gain. But that there, there, there's there's a point to be made you know if i post a picture of myself crying it's not just to say hey i'm really sad and i'm crying right now it's possibly for attention or it's with an explanation in mind you know hey look at me last month i was crying i was feeling really down about my weight about my job my boss has been a real pain in in the bum hole but but now look at me i drank a cup of smoothies I worked out, I ate some great food, and I feel great. Love yourself, girl. There's an agenda behind it. The, the, the ending point is I was bad and now I feel good. No one's just like, everything sucks right now and I don't know when it's going to feel better. And if they have, I've missed it. <laughs> and if we really want to put our thinking caps on here, when we are posting our achievements or when people are posting their achievements, they aren't always posting them from a place of confidence. Think about the biggest goal that you've ever achieved, something that was super aspirational within your life. When you reach that point, you were probably super happy, right? It was a great accomplishment. But there comes a point when you've done something, especially from the perspective of a creative and as an artist, where you just want to do more. You want to be your best self. And when you've reached the top, you want to reach even further and so when someone's posted something you don't know what motivation but went behind it in order for them to want to one up themselves does that make sense you may feel insecure about your body because someone has posted that they were able to afford plastic surgery but that person probably went through their own mental battles with their own insecurities that led them to want to have plastic surgery, to grind for the money to get plastic surgery, to then finalize their surgery and post it on the internet. For all you know, that Birkin bag was paid with rent money and you may see it as a future investment that you could never afford, but guess what girl, neither could that person. What is the point that I'm trying to make here? Well, I think it's pretty on the nose. We don't need to wait until the new year to feel like we have to start anew, even though humans have been setting those goals for themselves for years, for millennia, for centuries. 
The beginning of the year can work as a great landmark in order to work towards the new person that we want to be or the person that we've always wanted to be. However, don't feel bogged down by the pressures of social media to feel like we always have to set ourselves anew and be a better person for the new year. Take your time and when you're ready, you can gauge what time you need in order to set yourself your new goals. Maybe that happens in February, maybe that happens in December. But just remember, despite the cultural pressure that we might have around wanting to do better in the new year, it is an individual task and we need to go at our own pace. If you feel like you've already been doing great for the past year, girl, well done. Don't feel like if you don't do better this next 12 months that you've done worse. The new year definitely serves as a great reminder to strive to be the best version of ourselves and set new goals and aspirations for us to work towards. However, the pressures of social media can make us feel like if we're not doing the grandest and most luxurious of things, then we're not making accomplishments at all. Whether we're making baby steps or big steps, there's steps to be made. And if it means that you have to stay on that step for a little while, girl, I've been there, we've all felt that. Let the next 12 months not be a deadline into the bigger and better and richer person that you need to become, but an exploration into the person that you want to aspire to be. Thank you so much for watching this video. I've really been getting into my groove with these video essays. I've just got so many random thoughts on my mind all the time and I've forgotten how much I enjoy researching and writing essays. What the fuck is this kid doing? The voices! I feel like writing the script for these is half of the fun, but then when I actually sit in front of the camera and try to speak for like half an hour and my throat gets dry, I regret it all. But um, hey yo, in 2024, my goal is to stay consistent with my social media and I hope you guys can stay along for the journey. Links to the studies that I mentioned in this video will be in the description box and you can check out my TikTok for any other random pieces of information that come across my mind. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Okay, bye. So let her know, I gotta let her know that she my white horse, she my medical, she like my baby mama, know how to take care of me, get my baby problems, you gonna regret.